Hello everybody, my name is Lizix, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Rock Band 4 Deluxe on Shad PS4. Yep, Rock Band 4 Deluxe finally got working on Shad PS4. There's even a custom version made specifically for it. So, of course, first thing you're going to need is Shad PS4 itself. There is a still requires a custom build for Rock Band 4 currently. Hopefully one day you will be able to use the main branch build for Shad PS4, but that's just how it is today. So grab the QT build for your operating system if you want a UI. If you don't want a UI, then grab the SDL one. I will be showing the uh, installation on the QT version. Makes it a lot simpler, makes it a lot easier. So download that. Once you got that downloaded, Go ahead and extract it somewhere, probably a games folder. Just for now, I'll put it in my downloads folder. Simple enough. Then you're also going to need Rock Band 4 version 1.08. That is on the Rivals disc. So you can either dump it or find it elsewhere. And then go to Rock Band 4 Deluxe, linked in the description. It's a custom build for version 1.08. Just download the PS4 version, won't be the only one. And once you've got all of those things, open up Shad PS4, directory to install games. I'm just going to create a new folder and call it games right inside the Shad PS4 folder. That'll work for now. And the DLC folder, you can change this at a later time. I'm just going to leave it as the default, good enough for me. Once you're here, what you're going to want to do is click File, Install Packages, if you have it in package format. If you if you just have a folder, throw the Rock Band 4 1.08 folder right here. If you have it in a package, install it like this. Now this will eventually be going away. So, in the case that package installation stops working in the future, and nothing else... It, nothing extreme changes with this tutorial i will go ahead and show you how to install this from a package if the package installer is gone so what you're going to want to do is open up a program called ps4 package uh, viewer drag in the 1.08 uh, package file, click Extra, and click Extract Package. Select whatever folder you want, click OK, we'll extract it right here. It's gonna take a moment. Once it says Extracting Complete down here, you can close out of PS4 Package Viewer, and you can delete the package if you want. And then what you're gonna, gonna wanna do is open up this new folder, and take everything from Image Zero and move it out of that folder. Then you can delete image zero. And then everything in SC0, move it to SCE SYS. And just paste it in. And then you can delete SC0. Then what you do is move this to the Shad PS4 games folder, wherever that may be. And you're good to go. Now your game is installed. So once you've got the game installed, next you're going to want to uh, make some adjustments to the files, and install Rock Band 4 Deluxe. So for the file adjustments, you're going to want to right-click on Rock Band 4 here, click, uh, so hover over Open Folder, and click Open Game Folder. Once you're here, take both the libfmod and libfmod studio files, and move them to SCE underscore module, just like that. Good to go. Now you've got the base game installed. At this point, if you don't want to play Deluxe, you're good. You can play for the most part. There are some issues that can't really be fixed. I don't think Shad PS4 could even be updated to fix them, at least when it comes to gameplay. There are some UI bugs, but I'll get to that later. Once you've got that done, now you can begin to install Rock Band 4 Deluxe for version 1.08. Open up the RB40X PS4 zip file, 
open up this gold hand folder and the, the plugins folder and again drag this rb40x plugin.prx into SEE module. Once that is done, you can close out of the game files and go into the shad ps4 files, go into the user folder, data folder, and create a new folder called CUSA02084. And inside that, copy the entire Goldhand folder. You can delete the plugins.ini and plugins folders if you want, not strictly necessary. But there you go. Now you have Rock Band 4 and Rock Band 4 Deluxe installed. Now, how do you get a controller to work? Uh, I will be going over both instruments that work, so I'll be going over guitars and drums to some extent. First thing you're going to want to do is go to open up this config.toml file in the user folder with the text editor, and you'll see all of these things right here. These all control every single controller. So if you're using multiplayer, if you're playing single player, special pad class one and use special pad one are the ones you're going to be looking at. Anything more than that, multiplayer, two player, three player. Four player doesn't actually work because you can't play vocals yet, but you can play guitar and drums. So to do guitar, you set use special pad to true for the player number that you are using. So if you're player one, use special pad one. Now you set special pad class 1 to 1 for guitar, and then 2 is drums. That's all that needs to be changed there. Go ahead and save. I'll just be showing off guitar, because that's the instruments that I have available to me. Most instruments will work out of the box to some extent, especially if you have an Xbox 360 instrument, or a kit guitar of some sort, or a RetroCult mods adapter. They will all work partially, but there are ways to fix it to make it work perfectly. Essentially, the partially is you can hit notes, but you cannot whammy correctly, and tilt doesn't work. You can press select to activate, that works fine, but tilting is a no-go. So to fix these things, I'm going to use X360CE. Of course, this is Windows only. You may need to use an alternative if you are not using Windows, you can use uh, Anti-Micro on Linux, which uh, emulates a keyboard, turns your controller into a keyboard. Not the best because you don't get analog for the whammy, but it does work. And just follow all the instructions, but use the keyboard inputs that are on the Shad PS4 um, GitHub. Go ahead and open up X360CE. I'm going to be using a Santroller controller for this demonstration, but any guitar should work. Click Add, and then find your guitar here, which is called Arduino for some reason. For some reason, my device name has been broken. So as you can see, mine is already bound, but it is correct. It is accurate. So the bindings go. Green is A, red is B, yellow is Y, blue is X, orange is the left bumper. This is essentially the same as it is for um, running Guitar Hero 3. Speaking of, you should be using the latest version of X360CE, not the old version that is required for running Guitar Hero 3. Makes things a lot simpler. There's one extra thing for the frets of a um, rock band guitar, the solo buttons. They press the same as the regular frets, and then a second button, which should be bound to left stick click right here. My guitar is not a rock band guitar. You can find the solo extra solo button by using like a gamepad tester and then putting that number in here. You can set it manually by clicking here, going to buttons, and then you have all the buttons here. And you can just select the one that matches the solo buttons. And then again, start, same as normal. Select, same as normal. That's an incorrect mapping. That's outdated. You do not need to use select as deep by the left anymore. Select now accurately activates. Whammy is left stick up. 
So this is not the same as Guitar Hero 3. This is the important one, because normally Whammy is right stick left and right. Instead, it's left stick up and down. It's the only difference. And then Tilt is really weird. It is right stick down. That's, that's how you activate. And of course, since this is a custom guitar, it does have a working tilt sensor, even though this is a Wii guitar. Wii shell, I guess. For drums, the binds are similar, but slightly different. So the buttons all stay the same. Green, red, yellow, blue, orange. Same thing. Just match up the colors to your drum kit. The only special thing for drums is the cymbals have two inputs. They both press the button down and click in the right stick. So this stick button should, uh, there should be two inputs. You should be able to find this on your controller somehow. Whatever input matches all of the symbols, that's the secondary input that should be bound to the stick, the right stick click. Everything else matches guitar, start select, D-pad, there's no whammy on a drum set, so that doesn't match, and there's no tilt, but everything else is about the same. Once that's done, you can go ahead and high save that. Make sure to check enable mapped device, and you should be good to go. And hide X360CE. So you don't get multiple inputs, you're going to need a program called HidHide. I don't know what the equivalent is for Linux or Mac OS, but I use this program, HidHide, uh, check the inverse application cloak here, press the plus button, and go find your shadps4.exe, add it to the list. <laughs> As you can see, I've done a lot of work on shadps4 and have updated many times. And then go over to the devices tab and check your guitar, but not the controller Xbox 364 Windows. This is the emulated controller that X360CE is creating, don't touch it. Once that's done, you can close out, open Shad PS4, and of course before you get started there may be a couple more config changes that you want to make. So click on the settings button. To have the log stop spamming, because if you just open the game with no changes right now, the log will be going crazy. What you're going to want to do is go to the debug tab, go to this log filter here, Put in asterisk, colon symbol, capital C, R I T I C A L. So it's critical with a capital C. And now the log spam will stop. You can also go to the graphics tab and change the V blank divider. In my original one, I said to max it out, set it to 9999. That makes the game unstable now. So the new recommendation is to set it to the closest multiple of 60 to your monitor, preferably the one that's higher. So for me, I have a 144 hertz monitor. I'll just calculate this out on a calculator real quick. So 144 divided by 60 is 2.4. You always want to round up for this, so I would round up to three. That's the closest that is over my refresh rate. Well, of course, if your refresh rate evenly is divided by 60, just put that number in. If it does not evenly divide, always round up. So I set the V-blank divider to three, so it will be the closest it can be to my refresh rate, slightly over, but that's good enough. Now you won't have any issues. You can also use a program called RevaTuner Statistics Server and here you can see I'm setting the frame rate limit for shadps4.exe to exactly 144. So even though the V-blank divider is set to a higher frame rate, Reaver Tuner is forcing it to 144 hertz. You should also go over to the user tab because the username is slightly corrupted in this build. It's not that big a deal. Just set the name to whatever you want. It doesn't matter. And that's it. Now you're ready to play Rock Band 4 Deluxe on Chad PS4. Now how do you install DLC or custom songs? This is where it has gotten very complicated, as the Install Packages button is completely broken. You cannot use it at all. So what you're going to have to do instead, close out of Chad PS4, 
go to your package, and you're going to have to extract the package again using PS4 Package Viewer. So open PS4 Package Viewer, drag your DLC or custom song into PS4 Package Viewer, go to Extra, click Extract, same thing you did with the game files. This will extract faster, it's just a single song. And what you're going to want to do is go to the DLC folder that you selected at the start of setting up Shad PS4. Then you create a new folder in that DLC folder, called KUSA02084, again, just like the installation for Rock Band 4 Deluxe. Then drag in the extracted uh, PS4 package file, DLC package file, delete everything back be before this, you should be good to go. If this is not 16 characters, exactly 16 letters, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is 16 characters, 16 letters or numbers. It's good. It's ready to be run as a DLC. Almost. Now you go into that folder, go into the image zero. This works the exact same as what we did to the game files. So we go to the image zero, we copy that out, we go to the SC zero, and copy those into SC, uh, SYS. And that's it. That is everything you need to know for Rock Band 4 Deluxe, Rock Band 4 Customs, everything to run it on Shad PS4. Now, as you can see by that opening video and the title screen, I am indeed running Rock Band 4 Deluxe. Of course, options goes to the Deluxe settings. And if we go into play songs and sort by date acquired, my custom shows up just like that. And everything will just work. As you saw, some of the menus do look a little bit glitchy, but they all work. They all work perfectly. You press F10 to see the FPS counter, and you can press F11, and F11 to go full screen. So there you have it. Everything you need to know to get started on playing Rock Band 4 Deluxe on Shad PS4. And that's about it for this video. Thank you everybody for watching. Hope you enjoy Rock Band 4 Deluxe on Shad PS4. I'm Lizix. Peace out.